Hey, welcome back. Today we'll be going through the histology of the ovaries. So, the ovaries lie in the pelvic cavity and is a part of the internal genital organs, which include, of course, the ovaries, the uterine tubes, the uterus, and the vagina. The genital tract is going to be, of course, all the tubes, like all the tracts that open to the outside of the body. And the external uh, genital organs is going to be the, the labia majora and minora, the mons pubis, the vulva, um, the vestibule, so just like the opening of the vagina, and the clitoris. So the ovaries are going to be suspended um, you, into the pelvic uh, cavity by the ligament of the ovary. Of course, uh, the suspensory ligament of the ovary, which is different from just the li ligament of the ovary. And all that's kind of attached to the broad ligament. And this is the site of, of course, oogenesis and estrogen production. And it's connected to this broad ligament, which is made out of the mesovarium. And through the mesovarium, it conducts the blood and lymph vessels and nerves to the hilum of the ovary. And then the peritoneum is going to make um, part of the broad ligament. Inside, there's going to be the medulla, the stroma, the follicles, and then the oocyte inside the follicles. The surface is going to be covered by simple cuboidal epithelium. The germinal epithelium is going to be continuous. The peritoneal mesothelium, so this is what attaches um, to the ovary. The tunica albuginea is dense connective tissue, and it lies between the surface epithelium and the ovarian cortex. So it would be like right here. And the cortex is going to contain the follicular cells and the primary oocytes. And then uh, the connective tissue has reticular and collagen fibers to support it. Um, whenever there's it says connective tissue, like 100%, it's going to be both reticular and collagen fibers um, in whatever tissue of the body, really. So just a neat little note to keep in your mind. And the ovarian follicles are going to be all different stages. So not all of them are like the mature graphene follicles. Like this would be the mature one right here. The rest are just in various stages of development. And then the medulla is going to convey the vessels and the nerves. So inside the follicle is going to be the oocyte. And that's going to be surrounded by like one or two layers of the epithelial follicular cells. And then it's going to lie... Um, in that ba uh, basal lamina. Well, the follicular cells are, not the oocytes, sorry. The squamous epithelial cells are going to be like lining the primordial follicles while it's going to mature into simple cuboidal cells in the primary follicle. And then from there, it turns into stratified cuboidal epithelium and in the multi laminar follicle. So, it starts from primordial to primary to growing, growing slash uh, the multilaminar into the antral, and then finally the mature graphene follicle. So here is like a, so this is like a, um, this is going to be a coronal section. Like you're looking down into a, a follicle, and this is going to be a sagittal section. So the origins are going to come from the. Uh, epithelium of the dorsal wall. Primordial germ cells are going to induce the epithelium and mesonephros to proliferate and then that kind of migrates into the uh, yolk sac and there it proliferates and forms the uh, primitive sex cords but it's going to be like solid there's no lumen. Sex cords are going to uh, invest into the primordial germ cells and form the genital ridges and those are going to be the, your primary gonads and then from there, it gives rise to the actual ovarian follicular cells. And then the primordial germ cells are going to be induced and those differentiate into the oogonia at the fifth month. And those go into like uh, meiosis one and is arrested at prophase one. So atresia occurs when um, uh, there's just the natural degeneration due to like, you know, improper like uh, improper division and various other factors but um, you don't actually end up with 
too many when born so you're left with a, um, a million at birth like you you start with like a quite a bit more like maybe five million um during the fifth month and then it just you're only left with a million at birth and then by puberty like they have uh like basically shriveled up and died and you're left with only um 400 thousand and as an adult you only actually ovulate about like 500 eggs which is not that much compared to how much you started with a million right so your surviving oogonia will differentiate into the primary oocyte by the third month of development so by the third month that's when um they've reached like prophase one so the granulosa cells uh, surround it and makes that progesterone. So in a pellucida, of course, the antrum is just this, um, you know, uh, cavity. This is going to be your secondary uh, follicle, uh, and then the thicker follicles around this. And this is a, a tree, a tretic, uh, follicle. So it, it's shrunken. Um, there's no entrance, uh, antrum. The zona pellucida has kind of like broken down. It's not like round and um, supported anymore. The thica folliculi is like kind of like growing in and also dispersing. Also, this is another one. This is going to be a viable follicle, and this is the tritic follicle. So, um, it's starting to break down, as you can see. So the primary primordial follicles is going to be made of like the sim, uh, single layer of the squamous epithelial cells, so just one. And then the surviving primordial follicles are going to be separated from the ovarian stroma via the basement membrane, and so like they rest on top of the membrane and like jut outwards, and then they get larger and they mature and they have like much more um, organelles and they have that because they have more receptors for um like estrogen they have more receptors for fsh and lh compared to the other follicles so the largest cell in the body are your oocytes which makes sense they have um you know the most um they have the most organelles and um just like the the dna is not very condensed um and they mature due to the gonadotropin releasing hormones along with um, follicular stimulating hormones and luteinizing hormone so fsh is going to cause the single layer of squamous cells to be um a layer of cuboidal cells so this this um causes the maturation and then the primary oocytes are going to be deployed and the nucleus will get larger there's going to be more organelles uh, more um, cortical granules are going to be formed and then in the next phase of maturation, there's going to be um, more layers of cuboidal cells. So this is now the multilaminar phase. Um, but before that, it's still like a primary unilaminar follicle, right? So um, the multilaminar primary follicles are going to be surrounded by the granulosa cells. And then the primary oocyte makes the zona pellucida. Lo zona pellucida makes the lipoprotein. So uh, here's the corona radiata, antrum, granulosa, theca, theca, um, and right here should be your uh, zona pellucida. <coughs> so so uh, the sperm receptors CP3 and 4 are on the zona um, zona pellucida, and that will f um, induce the acrosomal Re reaction to prevent like you know um two sperms from fertilizing one egg theca internal will um secrete the andro androstandion which is uh, the precursor to um testosterone it it's very weak the granulosa cells will make the um estradiol from the andro uh Androstenedione. I'm sorry, I can never pronounce this. And uh, the estradiol is going to be your weak estrogen. And then your theca externa is purely there for support and has gap junctions for all of these to, like, you know, um, leak out. So, once again, here's there. Here's your follicle. Okay, so moving on, the multilaminar 
um, primary follicles will have like small spaces and the follicular fluid will like you know expand it's made out of a uh, hyaluronic acid growth factors plasminogens fibrinogens heparin sulfates and steroids uh, while that to help um, implantation and the spaces will enlarge and then make something um, like an actual cavity called the antrum so these are now the antral or secondary follicle graphene is going to be your main one it's going to be your largest one and antrum is going to like divide into internal and external stratum so it, it, there's going to be like kind of like two layers um, of the antrum it's going to be like uh, the internal stratum is going to make the cor corona radiata and then um, there's something called a cumulus ophleros so it's going to be like a fuzzy layer on the outside of the uh, the follicle and that will help attach the or not outside the follicles uh, outside the oocyte and that attaches the oocyte to the follicular wall and the external stratum line will line the um, antral cavity and then that sits on the basement membrane to make the granulosa membrane and that's when the graphene fo follicle will like you know push against the surface of the ovary and it's going to push 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 and form something called a ischemic stigma so with the pushing it's going to cut off the blood supply to that little part of the wall and the walls will continue like you know thinning and dying and eventually it ruptures during ovulation ovulation due to lh remember lh surge there it's going to stimulate the primary oocyte to continue meiosis one stimulate the granulosa cells to make more hyaluronin in order to like you know fill up the antrum and loosens up the cumulus ophericytes it increases the volume the pressure and the viscosity of the follicular fluid so it's like pushing 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 at that ischemic stigma and then the prostaglandin will cause the outside uh, uh, theca externa to contract so nice um, pressure application and um, plasminogen will help degrade the collagen in the tunica albuginea which is pretty tough and the epithelium and then rupture ovulation occurs so your secondary uh, oocyte is now haploid and the fimbrae which are like you know um, villi but there's no like absorption um, it's it's just like finger-like projections that's just gonna sweep the oocytes into the ampulla of the oviduct and then the walls of the ruptured um, graphene follicle like fold into each other and well that's the wrong image um, these are the fimbrae then um, well they'll kind of like fold into each other the granulosa and the theca internal cells will form the corpus luteum remember that's important um, without the corpus luteum um, the the zygote is not going to be able to, well, this hasn't been fertilized yet, but the uh, blastocyst will not be able to, well, it still hasn't been fertilized yet, I'm sorry. Um, the oocyte will not be able to uh, survive. So the corpus um, luteum is going to form from the graphene follicles, or, graf or granulosa cells, pardon me. So the granulosa cells are going to be degenerated granulosa or the granulosa lutein cells are degenerated granulosa cells. They're pretty big. They're polygonal. They're eosinophilic, so they're pretty. Um, they stain a pretty pink. They have a small round nucleus, and they have an important job because they secrete um, all these hormones. So the more important ones to remember is progesterone and estrogen. So the theca lutein is from the theca interna and it, it also is eosinophilic but it, it stains a little bit darker and they have like um, lipid droplets in the cytoplasm and they're found in the soul in the folds of the corpus luteum and these have a main role of just making estrogen corpus luteum itself is maintained in the pregnancy and if you menstruate the corpus luteum is going to just degenerate the fibroblasts will invade and create a scar of connective 
uh, dense connective tissues, and that forms something called a corpus albicans. And eventually that gets smaller, and then it, it, it blends with the ovarian stroma. And the involution of the corpus luteum does not involve any atresia in comparison to the the um, the f uh, follicles. So they do, these guys don't atresia. So here's your corpus luteum, and um, it, the corpus albuginea is or is going to be um, it's going to be or, or corpus um, albuginea is going to be like like a line, like a dark line. So during implantation, the blastocyst is going to go into the endometrium and become embedded, and there's just going to be a differentiation of trophoblasts into the cytotrophoblasts. Those have the anti-inflammatory cytokines and allows the implantation to occur without the the woman's body from rejecting uh, the implantation. Uh, as you can kind of like, you know, infer, if a person has a, uh, any kind of like immune disorder or they can't make the anti-inflammatory cytokines, it's going to be very hard for the woman to conceive because the, her body's going to always like reject the the embryo. So the cytotrophoblasts also play a role in secreting hydrolytic enzymes that will break down the extracellular matrix between the endometrial cell in order to this for the sinusoids to um, reach and allow um, blood, gas, and waste exchange between fetal uh, circulation and maternal circulation. The syncytial blast will make the human chorionic, um, human chorionic, I think, growth hormone. Um, HCG is actually the the hormone that is tested whether you are pregnant or not. This is what like you know shows in the double lines of a pregnancy test. Okay, so the decidual reaction is um, like the mother's end of the um, placenta formation because there is going to be a transformation of the uterine glands along with the vascular remodeling. You'll go through a lot of this more in like um, anatomy or embryology. But the apoptosis occurs, fibroblast becomes enlarged, and then there's going to be um, a lot of uh, protein synthesis, and um, it just allows the the mother's body to accommodate for an extra uh, strain of uh, resources because the, the, the fetus requires a lot of energy and a lot of nutrients in order to grow. Okay, so follicular cysts are filled with fluid and they can be granulosa and fecal endocrine cells. They're benign, sort of, but like they can cause a lot of problems, especially with like infertility, but it can also cause a lot of like pain during menses. Um, they form when ovulation doesn't occur or if a mature follicle involutes, so it's not supposed to do that. Mittel schmerz is usually during um, the middle of the menstrual cycle and that's when like you know the 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 cell involutes and it can cause some ovarian torsion because there's going to be comprom compromised um blood supply um due to like you know twisting of the ovaries this is really rare though because the ovaries are suspended by three very strong ligaments um, another problem is there's a dermoid cyst, and that's a mature cystic teratoma. So it's it's somewhat benign. It's, it's not metastatic, but it, it can cause problems with fertility. Um, okay, so follicular cyst. The cyst is going to be in the follicle. Uh, the dermoid cyst can kind of like occur anywhere. As you can see here, here's the cyst. Like, not good. Um, a hemorrhagic cyst, of course, is very dangerous. Usually, it's some kind of indication of um, ectopic pregnancy, and um, there's a lot of blood involved, and it may develop from, you know, the corpus luteum menstruation when it's filled with the flu fluid or blood, and it just persists. And then, as you can see here in this histocyte, it's just full of fluid. 
Okay, PCOS is going to be a bunch of growing primary follicles that form, and uh, there is no ovulation, but there's also no rupture, so they just like accumulate. Uh, it's somewhat related to increased androgen production, insulin resistance, it shows up as hirsutism, infertility, um, irregular menstrual cycle, like very severe acne. I'm not talking one or two pimples, I'm talking about like acne vulgaris. Anganthosis nigrans, so like the darkening of your skin, um, and it becomes like velvety, but that's really like in, that's not really because of PCOS, it's more because of the type 2 diabetes that, you know, these people generally um, like develop. Um, it's also a risk of endometriosis cancer because of the constant like, you know, cyst formation. And as you can see here, Here's the normal group, here's your growing cells, this is PCOS. So that's it for now, thank you for your attention, and good luck studying.